How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's video I've literally got everywhere driving me OCD mad. When I say everywhere it's not it's actually every part I need to finish the, the white chopper custom build bike which I'm really excited about. Uh, so today's video I just want to show you what I've got to do. So I'll show you this first of all. An absolute mission to find a brand new tyre for these bikes um, because even though I've got four of them, all these tyres, I don't know if you can see in the camera, they're all cracked and split all the way around and I could have put them on um, but these builds I want to do to a high standard. I hunted the internet and it's almost impossible but I did end up finding one. I uh, had it shipped over from Italy, turned up within about four days I think which again impressed me quite a lot and uh, then I found a back wheel because the back wheel I had uh, well, wheels everywhere it's clearly been sat in someone's garden for probably the best part of 20 years looking very sorry for itself there was an option to have it sandblasted uh, powder coated uh, that was going to work out about 50 quid so I went online and found this wheel um, for I'm going to pay for this £35 plus £5 postage. Uh, the good thing about this wheel is I can now put a brake disc on the back. There's two things about this. It could just be a bit of decor, you know, it could just be on there just for looks. Uh, but fingers crossed, it could actually be on there as a functional brake. I was quite chuffed about that. Um, going back to the tyre. Tyre come from Italy. I was really chuffed because it's Ken, is it Kenda? Yeah, Kenda, it's a Kenda tyre and they seem to be quite a decent brand um, so I was excited that I was going to get an actual brand tyre rather than sort of make my own brand in uh, but when it turned up it had silver writing on it going all the way around which from a distance it did look quite cool um, but being as my bike's white silver writing just didn't go with anything on it and went over the silver silver writing with white pen and it kind of looked alright a little bit messy but again you know I want to make these bikes to a high standard so I thought no it's not good enough so got some thinners out and wiped it all down sanded off what could wouldn't come off and we've now got just a blank canvas to work with I'm actually getting some stencils made up that does say Kenda and I will be painting them again but I think where it went wrong before as I was going over the top of their silver paint and my white paint was reacting to it so I've got a couple of little things I need to try with that, but that will be done. I then tried to cheat a little bit and made some decals up for the front wheel motor. Uh, as you can see, it says Kenda. Yeah, it does now anyway. And again, it looks all right, but a little bit cheap. So I thought, no, I'm not having it. I was never happy with this tire anyway. It's a bit plasticky. So I end up searching the internet and found it some Kenda tyres, um, same size as this, with actually proper white writing on uh, and ordered those, they were about £15 and they should be turning up uh, within the next couple of days. So I'll just whip this one off and put that one on and then that's ready to go straight on. That's so we're done. I put a bullet on the, the headlight uh, just because I think it looks cool and that's what the bike is called. If I haven't said this before, the white bike is actually called Bullet. Um, not after the Steve McQueen film, I just think uh, it's got loads of little shotgun but it's dotted all over the place so I just think it's appropriate for what I was going with. I'm showing you loads of stuff here. So because obviously this has got disc brakes on this wheel and I've already had my bike powder coated, welding it wasn't an option so I went on to online and just typed in what my issue was and I found this little bracket. So this little bracket goes over your existing frame at the back but it is designed for just you know your standard mountain bike not your mad custom chopper bike frame like I've got I think I'm like 95% sure this will go on it should be functional the disc works it fits in the gap with the caliper on there as well it's there or thereabouts so I just once I put it on I know for sure but at the moment I haven't tested it so it's still something that could massively go wrong um, but if it does we just have to go back to the um, squeezy brakes I don't even know what they're called I'm not a proper bike guy I just stumbled into this the battery's gone away to be uh, airbrushed obviously with the bike the way it was with the tank looking all you know sexy and cool 
it, the battery made it, I don't know, it just took a bit of the glamour away from it. So I'll give him the battery and he's uh, doing some mad gold uh, flake design on it. So I'm looking forward to getting that back. Uh, and then last night I popped to see my pal who's got his own sand blasting cabinet and we just took off any nut and bolt that I haven't managed to get brand new and we uh, sandblasted them so they're all you know like brand new now so if I haven't bought brand new bolts for it they've been every bolt and nut on this has been sandblasted and repainted so it's uh, you know they look like brand new nobody will know the difference I haven't got the kickstand uh, this was completely rotten it was proper rusty and we put that in the cabinet and they come out like that which I was over the moon with really because it looks brand new one thing I probably am going to do with this, and I think I've talked about this in another video, is we're going to cut about an inch out of the, the stand and then re-weld it. So when the bike sits, it's not sort of like a seesaw and rocking, it's literally level. So both wheels are touching the ground, but the kickstand's there just taking the, taking the weight so it doesn't fall. What else have I done? What have you done, Russ? What have you done? Uh, I put the bike together, which was a bit of a mission actually. Taking things apart is a lot easier than putting them back. When I say putting them back, putting them back right so they actually still work. I was out here for a good week and I said numerous swear words, threw a couple of things on the floor in a paddy, which I don't get angry about anything, um, but these things really did wind me up. Uh, so basically the front forks, because I've had them powder coated, your powder coating paint becomes a lot thicker than it was before. And with my triple T's, um, I've got an old one here I can show you. The one on the white bike hasn't got these grooves that cutting out. So it's literally the hole that's there now is how tight it was trying to get the poles through. So it's real hard to try and get the pole through without scratching it because I had no leeway. Uh, I'll use lots of lube and lots of washing up liquid just to try and squeeze it through without scratching it, which I did do. And I was, you know, overly impressed myself. My second issue was the, the triple T uh, main bar going through the, the frame. It was just too tight and everything I was doing it was either getting tighter or I was getting to the point where it just wouldn't stay on. So there was something clearly wrong and I was, went back through some old videos I made just to sort of give myself some notes of which way the bearings go in and you know make sure that all the washers are in the right position and that's what the issue was. I, I hadn't put things back right. Um, lesson learned, you learn something new every day and I clearly learned something new that week. It was a pain and I'm glad I've sorted it now because it looks cold. I might as well show you it. So let's have a look at it. Oh, this is my, uh, my new shed by the way. So I put all these panels up on the ceilings and on the walls. Um, just like pl white plastic corrugated stuff put some cool little uh, deco on the back wall there it says punch today in the face which you should do every day if you don't punch yourself in the face or something whatever turns you on so this is the bike as it stands at the moment front forks are on uh, and they actually move about free wheel I've got to change these, I've replaced these for new ones. This one and this one. This one's been sandblasted. And we've got uh, the pedals are on now and they work fine. I put these little bullets here and bullets here. So they're, they look quite cool. Obviously, I don't want to go mad with the bullets, but I do want them in places. Um, but these ones, obviously, if you're worrying, um, they just pop off they just just put a magnet on and just cut them the bullet down polished it up uh, I've still got a bit of polish on it uh, and obviously if you want to take your pedal off it's easy enough to do it now or if you want to put them back on just clip on that's a nice little touch I've got obviously the seats on now the rear mud guards on which we're still in two minds whether we should paint this we might add a a bit of airbrush into it but it is looking rather cool uh, there's, this is one of my other bikes this is how they start off look how minging that is proper rusty uh, once it's sandblasted and treated it'll be like new 
There's another one. You know, and then we got one of the petrol tanks ready to be sanded down and some mad design on it. And that's the seats. That's the cover taken off. I've got to replace that with a patch and then recover it. Just bang me head. What else have I done? Uh, and that's pretty much it. So, put that back on. So we do actually have a game plan now and everything is coming together quite well. I was hoping to uh, move to another location to build this bike, a bigger one, um, but I need to go in there and, and gut out whatever's in there, so I think I've got a couple of days work there before I can do anything. A couple of days doing that or a couple of days building this, you know, might as well save that for the next build really. So I'm going to leave this running just in case I say something funny, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I think what we'll do is just spray a bit of Derby D40 in there, just to... Rust again. And you can't say WD40 without saying it like a redneck. WD40 is. W. Hopefully, I haven't offended any rednecks there. I think I'm borderline redneck anyway. I wear check shirts, baseball caps, and I'm on the, in the process of getting a pickup truck. Doesn't really get much redneck than that, does it? So the, they were the bolts that was on in on the bike. And went after we sandblasted them and sprayed them, you know, they look like brand new. Obviously, always worth keeping these because just in case you need them for another build. We're going to attempt to stick the headlight and the handlebars on today, and then it is going to work. So, there. so, what I had to do, I had to grind off these two. I'm going to need three arms to do this. So that goes there, like that. And that goes on there, like that. I can see some swear words coming soon. Ah, oh, sh**. I left a thing up there. Wish me luck. So this is where I need like a sexy assistant, you know, like a Pamela Anderson type lady that's willing to help me out on my needs. And then that's gonna go in now, just like that. Ah, sh**. Ah, sh**. Don't wanna do that. Righty tighty lefty loosey, Russ. Did you not learn nothing? These handlebars look absolutely wicked on you. Just drop everything, why don't you rush? Yeah. Yep, that's it. Just drop it on the bike even, why not? So you know when I've said, you know, how long does it take you to build these bikes? And I say oh, hundreds of hours, hundreds of hours. Most of those hundreds of hours are just me fing around with stupid bolts that won't go in. For no apparent reason other than they're just <laughs> Ouch, you whack yourself in the head. If you're not hitting your head on the roof, you're hitting your head on your cap. Absolute spaz. Another <sighs> mission. What do you think we got there now? Once the wheels are on. We'll be able to find out what the seating position is and the handlebar position. But I'm kind of happy with what we got at the moment. Now I've got to find that nut I dropped. Oh, ouch! I bang my head all the time and everything. I think my granddad used to bang his head all the time. I don't think I ever knew my granddad about cutting his head. Maybe that's where I get it from. Inherited his clumsiness. If I was a nut and I fell on the floor, where would I go? <laughs> Bring me in again. <laughs> we like 
laughing what they look like. I do. That's all that really matters, isn't it? <sighs> Gonna give up looking for that nut. So big shout out to Dave for letting me use his sandblaster and teaching me how to weld actually. That was quite fun as well. That's for a whole new video. Um, obviously, shout out to my brother for airbrushing it. Uh, Clint for dropping off a whole bag, for bin bag full of uh, bullets, which more than I'd ever need, but they all, all come in handy. And uh, obviously, just for everyone that's been supporting, liking the bikes and the videos and sharing them, um, it does mean a lot. As always guys, thank you for watching, give us a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one.